Hi everyone. In this video, we'll walk you through the point cloud mapping feature. Before mapping, we need to create a new project. Enter the project name, select a path to save it, and then click OK to create the new project. Next, click the point cloud mapping feature. There are S1 and P1 for the device model. For S1, there are four scenarios, indoor, outdoor, vehicle, and tunnel. Here, we can also select a mapping range or change it. For P1, there are two scenarios, indoor and outdoor. We can also select the mapping range. Then, enter the advanced settings to set the mapping parameters and RTK offset. If the loop data is unclosed or layered after solving it, we can enable the back to starting point feature and the dynamic object removal feature will be automatically enabled. Here, we have three offsets for the RTK receiver deviation X, Y, and Z. When the position of RTK receiver is changed in vehicle or backpack mode, we need to edit this parameter with the offset values to ensure the accuracy of point cloud mapping. The last is to set camera parameters. When the camera parameters are recalibrated or not imported into the scanner, we must manually input them each time we create a map. After all the settings are done, we take P1 for the mapping demo. Click Next to enter the mapping page. First, select the FUDSLAM data file for mapping. As P1 carries data from an RTK camera for our demo, we need to enable RTK Fusion here. Below, we can choose the corresponding coordinate system. If there is no desired option, we can also choose Custom Coordinate System. Select the projection parameters in projection mode. Here, we can edit some parameters, including central meridian, origin latitude, false easting, false northing, and scale factor. We can also import converted parameters here or enter them manually. If we are in a known or standard geographic coordinate system, we can choose the standard system. The second case is that after we have completed data collection, we use the RTK survey software to convert the FJDRTK data and obtain the local target.fjdrtk data. Then we can directly select it here and import our target.fjdrtk data at the same time. If we haven't converted the file in the survey software, we can directly select Custom Coordinate System. Once a standard coordinate system is selected, the corresponding FJDRTK data file will be read automatically. The third feature is Optimize with Control Point. In the case where we use the base station to collect some control points during scanning and obtain the geographic coordinates of these points, we can enter or import the file of these coordinate points in TXT or Excel format. Since both Optimize with Control Point and RTK Fusion will convert the coordinates to the geographic coordinate system, we can only select one of them to perform. As we use the RTK data, we enable RTK Fusion here. Next, import the data for point cloud colorization. We only need to import the two .ins data files collected by the camera. If we have converted the files before, we can also directly import the converted .mp4 format file. Once the files are imported, click OK to create the point cloud. The screen will show the mapping progress. We can also click display frame by frame or cumulative display to show the point cloud. Since we have obtained the colorized point cloud data in the absolute coordinate system, we can render it with various colors. Currently, it is in RGB mode, and we can change it to elevation mode, where we can display by time, intensity, or a combination of elevation and intensity. We can also display color point cloud data in the form of boundary reinforcement or X-ray. After the point cloud is mapped, we get the color data with absolute coordinate information. Hold down the shift button and select a point. Then we will see the relative and absolute coordinates. We can also select the point cloud and see the coordinate information of the point cloud in the lower right corner. We can also operate RTK registration separately. Here, choose the FJDRTK file or custom coordinate system. If the point cloud is not colorized during mapping, we can select the point cloud and colorize it here. In the advanced settings, we can also enter the camera parameter file. If the camera parameter file has already been imported into the scanner, then we don't need to enter it here. But if the file is changed, we need to import the change file here. This is our introduction to the point cloud mapping feature. We hope you have learned to use it.